So this morning, it's around the start of December. I've just got a free morning because we're pretty busy with clients this time of year. So we just squeezed you guys in, have a little look round. We've got all the females uh, on the menu at the moment. So we're just going to literally see what we come across. Just coming down this hedgerow to the edge of the big wood. Just looking across there, there's a, a roe deer on its own. So it could be a roe buck on its own, or it could be a roe doe that never had any kids. Just keep heading down. Just bear that one in mind, we might be able to come round onto it, have a closer look. So I'm just trying to get a better look at that roe deer. Obviously this time of year, um, most of the bucks have, haven't got any antlers. So you're really just looking um, on the rump patch to see that tuft of hair that sticks out if it's a female or if it's stood broadside on you can sometimes see the hair coming off the willy I reckon that gut feeling is it's a roebuck just looking at the size of its um, shoulders and it's got a thick neck on it yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's definitely a, a roebuck that's cast its antlers. Looking across there, it's just turned its head and against the uh, the light coloured cereal crop in the background with its head side on, I could see like the, the platform of where its pedicles were. Plus also, you just look at it there, like I say, it's on its own. Uh, it's got a good sized neck on it. No obvious tush coming off the rump patch so we'll keep moving on find something else walking up the edge of the wood here to have a look on some more fields around the corner. And it's obviously really crispy and noisy on the, the frozen leaves. So it's been quite difficult to come up there being quiet. And there's a lot of pigeons in the edge of the wood and keep flying out as we're walking up. So obviously that might, you know, not spook the deer, but draw their attention to the fact that something might be coming along. They've already run off, so there's no way you guys are going to get to see them. But just come around the corner here. There was a road doe and a buck kid um, that just clocked us as we came around the edge. So yeah, they've run right off into the next field. And we'd usually leave that road doe anyway, because if we've got um, a mother and a buck kid, we want to try and leave the mother as long as possible. So the buck's got the mother through the winter. It doesn't really need her for milk, obviously, but it's just if you're trying to grow a, a decent animal, um, I think it's probably better to leave the mother with them as long as possible. So we'd leave those does until the end of the season when all the row in this area have then bunched up a little bit. So you're not 
leaving that buck kid completely on its own. Keep on it. You little bugger. So we were just cutting through the wood to cut across the field to go into the wood in another area and just noticed a muntjac coming along the edge of the wood from left to right so I managed to get the rifle up on the sticks. Um, it was a pretty picky shot through all the uh, nettles that were there so about 60 meters um, and then we just reloaded and we're just about to move on another one came through um, but it never stopped there's another one there now. <whistles> Don't start that. <whistles> well, I don't even know where we're up to now. I shot one monk jack through here, it was on the edge of the wood. We were just about to do a piece of camera. Another one came walking through, but we couldn't get a shot on it. Um, so we've just gone back to talking to you guys again. And then we spotted another one walking down the edge of the wood again. So three run jack, we've just shot two. Uh, sun's coming up, we'll go and have a look. Good, that's the second one down. Go and find the first one. And here's the first one. So just got these two together. Um, this is the first one I shot. Um, it's a good, mature, late middle-aged doe. Um, and this is the second one I shot, is a, an immature buck, so it's under a year old. Uh, so maybe, you know, six months old, something like that. Um, you can see it hasn't started growing any pedicles yet. They're just gonna start coming out of the head. Got the 3006 today because in case we see a red deer, um, the 243 I've got with the ammunition I'm using is just too light for those red deer. So bought the big rifle, um, but it does make a hell of a mess on the munchak. So for the first time on film, I've actually shot both of these um, in the neck just to try and keep as much meat on them as possible. Um, obviously 3006 on a, a small deer is going to do a lot of damage. Um, so taking them in the neck you're pretty sure you're gonna uh, smash the um the spine up which is obviously what you're aiming to hit um so yeah 
two down. We've got another hour or so we can wander around for, so we'll just put these in the shade somewhere. They'll be okay for an hour, and then we'll get them picked up and sorted out. So there's those two row, we'll just let them keep coming down. They're coming down the edge of that fence. So we've just got a row doe and a buck coming down the ride towards us. The buck's got antlers on its head, so it's obviously not a buck kid. So if we get a chance on the doe, we'll take it. Hundred and forty meters. It was a nice little surprise. Just stalking up the main ride here. Um, not really trying too much, making a lot of noise going through these leaves. And we'd spotted two row gone across in front of us, sort of 300 meters up. Um, and they came back out and came back down the ride towards us. Obviously they're a little bit penned in on the ride. Um, we are one of our hazel coppice areas. So they were just coming down the fence line towards us. A row doe and a row buck, both probably yearlings. So um, the row buck still had his antlers on his head, just little sort of two, three, four point spikes. Um, so obviously we just taken the row doe and left the row buck to go off. 
Just got to remember the all deer, the old ones, cast their antlers first. So the younger ones actually have them on a lot longer. Um, so that very first roebuck we saw in the field this morning, that was an old one, so it already cast its antlers. Um, and then this young buck we've just seen with this doe, he'll cast, well, any time now, basically. So we just walked up to this one, um, again, because I've got the 3006, it was nice and close. Um, I've shot it in the, the base of the neck. Um, and because I haven't hit the heart lung area, um, unlike usually when I chest shoot stuff, I don't need to bleed it. Um, obviously on this occasion, because the heart lungs are intact, um, I've bled the animal, so it's what you call a thoracic bleed. So you feel with your fingers for the front of the breastbone, pop the knife in there um, and just draw it up the neck a little bit. Um, and that cuts the arteries that, that run across the front of the sternum there. Um, if you get it right, obviously different size animals have different amount of blood. Um, you'll see the blood come straight out. If you can't quite find it, then you can go in another time, turn the knife at 90 degrees and cut down as you come out. Um, but that just bleeds that carcass. Um, yeah, so just a nice sort of young, early middle-aged doe. Um, nice clean carcass, this one. So the game dealer will really like it. Um, we'll keep walking up the ride and so we find anything else on the way back to the truck. So obviously, as we were saying about this morning, the difference between bucks and does when the bucks don't have any antlers is all the females have the um, this tuft of hair that sticks out of their rump patch called the anal tush. So you've just got to look for that to 100% identify it as a, a female. Well, there we go. It's now 20 to 10. Um, the, uh, the frost just starting to defrost a bit. And that mud that was nice and hard is now going back to sludge again. Um, so before it gets too soft, we'll just razz around and pick up those uh, three deer and get them back to the larder. And I'll come stalking with a client this afternoon. So here we are back at the larder. Um, I'll get these three sorted out and put in the chiller. Um, certainly the munt jack are gonna go for um, Christmas estate orders uh, for the staff. And um, we'll be out 
well, it'll be January next time. Um, I'm not sure what it'll be after. Maybe Chinese water deer. Just have to see what the plan is nearer the time. So thanks for watching and uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment. And uh, yeah, thanks very much.